we're back live now. Let's just wait a couple minutes so people can rejoin. And we've got our instructor back. Okay. Okay, so here we are in the last hour. We're not going to get as much done as I had planned for, but, you know, it is what it is, and uh, if we need to do more of these, you know, maybe, you know, next weekend or something like that, I don't know. We, we, we can talk about that in the future. But uh, let's, uh, let's everybody open up a browser, please, and let me switch to screen sharing. And go to the link that I just posted in the IRC. And if you go, this is the link right here. Um, if we look at this link, we'll see that this is just an API for something called the tvdatabase.com. This is an open source project that people can go and, and go into their, uh, and say, this is what it, a movie's about. This is when I first started, IMBD, you know, upload a banner for it, and and so on and so forth, right? So if we actually like go to the the TV database .com, TV, uh, database .com or .org or no, here we go. And, and uh, if we were to search actually for King of the Hill here, uh, why didn't it bring anything back? King of the Hill. So as you can see, this is the data that they have right here. People can upload these pictures. This is a open source site right here. Okay, it's got ratings and stuff like that. But I mean, what does that have to do with anything? So they offer an API, right? Now in Qt, there's a thing called XML list model and XML roles. Okay, and what we can do with this is we can asynchronistically grab data from APIs and use it in our programs. So you can see here that we have these little things. We got like the date, the data right here. Okay, that's one. And then we can go down to the series. Okay. And then underneath series, we've got things like the ID, the language, the series name, the banner, the overview of what it is, the first time that it was aired, IMBD number, this number, and then another ID number, right? Okay, so how, how do we actually use this though in Q? So if we were to go here, I'm going to paste something into, uh, I'm going to, now everybody that's using QML1 right now, you guys, uh, well, I'll tell you guys here in a second. Let me get a paste here ready. Let me try and explain this also, too, while I'm doing it. So if we look at that link right there, you'll see that if you are using uh, Qt Quick 1, you do not have to worry about this line that says import Qt Quick .xml, uh, list model 2.0. If you are using Qt Quick 2.0, then you have to include this. But if you're using Qt Quick 1, you just do the import Qt Quick uh, 1.0. And it, it'll automatically pick it up. It, it changed, and so that it is, it is what it is. So how do we use this right here? Let's, let's, let's uh, copy this, okay? Let's go back over to Qt Creator, and let's paste this in. Okay, whoops. We're actually going to create a new file over here just to, let me close this one out because I don't want to ruin that program. So we right-click, Add New, Qt. Qt Quick 2, or if you're using Qt Quick 1. And we're going to call this uh, data model. Okay. And we'll hit next. We'll hit finish. Now let's take and paste in what we just had.
Okay, so now we've got this data model and how this works, okay? This is XML list model. This is the ID of this thing. You guys already know what ID is. The source of where we're going to get this is from the link that I was telling, the, the source of the API, okay? Next, we say we want it to query data series. So if we go back over to our browser, you can see that we have data right here, and then after data, we want to query series, okay? Now, we can use things in here that are like, uh, what is it called, uh, X roll or whatever. We could use, like, the, the uh, let me get rid of this just for right now. Um, we could use, like, for slash, for slash, and the, the, the wildcard symbol, and it would search everything, right? Um, there's many, many, many different things that you can do with this. I say check it all out and help. Um, but we'll, we'll get more into that if we have time. But anyways, so what I'm doing here is, is I'm querying the data and the series, right? So those two layers down. And I say, I'm going to create now with an XML role, I'm going to create a, a name variable called name, okay? And I want it to query string, series name and turn it into a string, okay? So if we go back over to our example, our XML, and we look at our series name right here, Okay, see how it's all capitalized and it all looks like that? There it is, right? And then we have our name over here. We got series ID, series ID, overview, overview, the banner, and the banner. And if we go over there and we look, you can see they're all there. And that's, that's what we're doing, right? So how do we actually make this happen, though? You know, so what we need to do now is we have this thing that says on status change. So if the XML list model is ready, Okay, console log, this thing's been loaded, okay? Else, or, or I mean, if the status of XML model is loading, console log, loading. If the status model is error, console log, error plus the error string, okay? And you can use this, which I was hoping we'd have enough time, but I'm not thinking we're going to, but the XML ready, once it's all ready, we can populate our own databases with that, too. Uh, which is really helpful. But anyways, how do we use what we have in front of us right here, right? So there, there's a couple ways. Now we have this, 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 this thing called data model, right? So let's save the file, okay? And let's go back over to my first element again, our home, our home one, right? And we got these buttons and stuff. Let's just erase that and get it back to being a straight-up rectangle, okay? It's 640 by 400, okay? We got this straight-up rectangle here. Now what we do is we say list view, okay, and there's a, a list grid too, also too. Now, we want to say the model, okay, is our data model. We put our strings around it right there, okay, and now we want to delegate, okay, an item, a new item from this, okay. And we want it to be the width and height of root, of course, right? So there we go. Now, in, under this model, or I'm sorry, under this, this item here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make it the same size. But now we're going to start adding new things like text, right? Now, if I say, uh, I don't know, ID, name, uh, root, OK? And then we say text, and we go back over to our data model, and we grab name from right here, okay? We put is it equal to name, all right? Now, this might not work. In my, this is the risk I take of doing things live. But, uh, yeah, and we'll change it to be color of black. Make sure that it's quoted in. Run it. King of the hill. If we then add more text to it, like uh, we'll just copy this whole text right here, paste it again, and we're going to call it ID. And we're going to say for the text, we're going to say this is the series. ID, 
and then we're going to put a pound thing right there, okay? And then we're going to put the plus symbol, which means we're adding something. We go back over to our data model over here, grab the series ID, go back over to our first element right here, and change name to series ID. Save it, run it, wham, it's on top of each other now. That's not good. So what we can do is we can anchor the top of it to be name dot bottom. And then we'll anchor top margin 12. Now it says this is the series ID blank 739 blah blah blah. Well, we could start adding even more things in here to make it even look nicer. We can add the tab notation. So now when we run this, it should have two tabs, in which it does. We can add the new line notation. We can say that we want this ID thing to be in bold. Okay, we can also go down here to say this next one and say image, and we'll say banner image, call it banner image, and we like to do the camel casing here, and we'll say the source, okay, now if we go over here we can see that it's, it's underneath graphical whatever, right, okay, so it, if we go, because I know this API a little bit, I think it's just under banner, Let's grab that just to make sure. Yep. So we can say source is equal to ht blah 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 plus banner. Because in our data model over here, we have it declared as banner. We go back over to our API. We see that banner is graphical. It doesn't have the forward slash, right? We went and checked out to make sure we knew where it was. Okay. So we add the string and then that. We're going to say parent. We're going to say with. To pull the parent with. Or even better, so we don't get confused. Root with. We'll say height is equal to root uh, height divided by 6. Run it. And now asynchronistically, it is grabbing these things. Okay? But we have a problem here. We can see this and how it's how it's rolling and how it's rocking, right? But we, we pasted it over the top of our stuff. The only reason why we did that is because it's the, la it, it's the child element, right? So if we take this, remove it, go back up on top of the text, okay? add it right there, you'll see that the text is sitting on top of this, right? Now, but what if we do, what if we actually go back over to our API over here, right? And we take out King of the Hill and we put in Star Trek. Now we all know that there's a bunch of Star Treks, so we can see over and over and over again in here that there is a bunch of things. So what can we do with this, right? So let's take this right here, and I'll paste it into the IRC chat here. And let's take this that we have right here. Let's go back over to our model. Let's go to our source of our model, our source of our API, and let's change that. Okay? To be Star Trek. Now, what we're going to do, though, instead, is we're going to query everything again, like we were talking about before, right? So we're going to get every one of those names, every one of those series IDs, every one of those things, right? So the cool thing about this model is, is when we go back over here, we got we got a banner, and then we got some things, right? That's great. Okay, let's do it. Let's try it. And I got a XPS error here going on. Oh, I know why. We got to put the data in first. So 
we can actually just change our data model back to exactly what it was before. I'm really sorry about that, guys. And I'll post that just so you guys can see it. And let's try that again. And it's loading. There's one. And it only loaded one. But you can see is that if we were to take and then actually put the whammo at the end here, unsupported image format from this guy right here. So that's where our error is located. But we can um, we can add more and more and more things to this. There's somewhere online you guys can get help with this from. So it's loaded, but it didn't load the things. Anyways, that's how we can make, uh, that's how we can use APIs online to be able to gather, you know, uh, data from API sources. And this needs to be like that, and this needs to be like that. And there we go, Star Trek. We could also say, uh, like for for our delegate, <clears throat> excuse me, for our delegate back in our first item over here, we could take and make our whole delegate. Okay, we can go to our item, right, that we're delegating. Take it, select it, go up to the item right here, copy this, remove it, and now we create another new file. And we're going to call this one data delegate. Probably spelled that wrong. And we just paste over what we have, our item, and so on and so forth. Clean it up some. Go back over to our first element, my first element. And underneath data uh, delegate, we are now just going to delegate uh, data delegate I'm off. and this is how we can use XML to be able to get information from online sources and to make applications that use these online sources and uh, whatnot which is really powerful uh, I think, personally. Now, drawbacks to this. Well, one of the one of the major drawbacks to this would be the fact that you have to be online to to use it, right? So the way that we get around that is is we we create databases for it, right? Um, for our data and our and our stuff, so that when we're when we're not online, we can call on these databases instead of having to call over asynchronistically, so to say, over the uh, over the line, right? And uh, that that is that. But I'm still not sure why it's not. So, yeah. So yeah, let's see if anybody has any questions about XML querying. We'll give it five minutes. Oh, did we drop? No, we didn't. Okay. We can also take. Uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Pardon. Oh, nothing. We can also take our model that we had from before, plop it in the bottom right here, and then we can call it by its ID. Okay. We can also start making content with and all sorts of stuff. Again, for, for elements, you know, hover over them, wait for it to show, press the F1 button, 
you can see that we can add cache buffers to it too also. I forgot to say that. That's, a, that's an important one right there. But yeah, you can see we can add headers and footers for it also too, um, which is really nice. And anyways, so now it should read again um, with the series model even being on the same page, right? So try it. XML is not. Oh, because I didn't. Okay, so I gotta go back over here. And there we go. Now let's try this. Oops. So stuff like that is how I managed to make stuff like this. And there you go. And that's, do that's doing exactly what I just showed you guys. It's querying over XML, unless if it's already in the database. If it's already in the database, then it doesn't do that. So I guess uh, I was going to give it five more minutes to see if there's any questions or anything like that. Code Lotus asks, the UI2 Ubuntu TB is mostly QML. Ever, does that code work completely with, OK, so let's get to the first one here. Code Lotus asks, the UI2 Ubuntu TB is mostly in QML. Uh, what I was just showing right there isn't necessarily Ubuntu TB. That's just what I use for Ubuntu TB as my own personal. Um, so, but on that manner, yes, it's it's completely wrote in, in QML. Uh, besides some backend stuff, some C++ stuff that was part of Unity 2D. Uh, but yeah, it does. It runs completely on QML. Does that code work completely with Ubuntu TV? Um, Jaggy, can you, uh, Jaggy asked that. Could you uh, maybe, I, I, I don't understand your question there. I'm sorry. Maybe try again? I don't know. I'm sorry. I could show you guys the code. They're asking if the code you just did, like the example you just made, works with the Windows TV. Yeah. So if I go to desktop here, right, and I, I actually have Unity TV uh, right here. OK, right? 6.10, open it up. We'll open up the CMake file. OK, there it is. Now we go to File, Open File Under Projects. We go back over to where it was there. And we go down to the shell. You can see that there is a shell QML project, right? We open that up. And you can see now that all of this code that from shell right here down to wallpaper color QML. Every single one of these little bitty pieces of code is all QML. It's all QML. 
And then this stuff right here was used for tying into Unity and tying into D, uh, Dbus and some other stuff like that. Um, but you can see that if I go over to the shell right here, if I go to Unity 2D, I can test out all the different things with it, right? I can test out like the hotkeys. I could just run the panel instead of the shell. I could. That's one of the really cool things about about Cube um, is the ability to be able to do that things once you make those sort of tests. Uh, that's that's one really really cool thing about it that I really enjoy um, using. You know, so you know if I was to go inside of uh, where did I put that comment? QTB QML main content and we got series delegate right here which is the delegate that you've seen and we got the model right here which is the same uh, well actually it's under Siri series model right here that is the exact same code that we were just using and when I run that on the desktop here, oops, I can only get to it from the TV mode. There it is. So what it does is it just takes the text from here, uh, and then it goes out and grabs each one, you know, and that's exactly how it works. And yeah, and of course we could fill. I guess okay. So for this next example, I'd like all of you guys to, um, and if you're using, uh, if you're using 1.0, I'm really sorry about this, but this is only going to work in 2.0. I mean, is there any extra code to get it to work in Ubuntu of TV? So Jaggy asks. He, he was wondering if it takes any extra code to get it to work in Ubuntu TV. Yeah, it does. It takes extra code. It takes some uh, JavaScript optioning. and Yeah, absolutely it does. It, and like I said before, this is not Ubuntu TV, you know, so it's, you know, it is that. So next, moving our attention to half an hour of Ubuntu app building. So. If you'd like, you can grab that branch right there. And I will open that branch up. And this is how you open it. Once you have it downloaded, you just go to File, Open, and then you go to weather.qml project. Select that and press the Open button. We can close down all of our other files that we have open by just simply pressing the X button until they're all gone. So another thing about Qt Creator is, is that we can right-click and set things as active projects, which means what runs when we press Control r so the weather project here, once you guys have it downloaded, there's a file in here called DB Utilities. This is how I connect to, uh, right here, this is how I connect to uh, my SQL. Well, th these are functions that are wrote in JavaScript in order to be able to connect to my SQL. Like we have this function right here, home database, where it returns local storage open database and sync to the weather app. Okay, calling 1.0 storage database, and then we set the size, right? Now, we call that function right here, okay, and then we translate and we say, create database if not existed called weather app home. Then we have these, this other function right here, insert into tables, where we insert the weather API values, which we don't know at the time, as one, 
and then we encode the URI, which means basically like if I was to type into my browser right now, uh, uh, easy way to do this. If I was to type in something Google Maps, you'll see that it already brings me automatically because I'm using Chrome. Anyways, so say I had, like, I don't know, some Google Maps and then forwards, you know, some spaces and something like this, right? So, say I was like typing something like that in, right? It would take those spaces and replace them with the with the percentage twenty sign on. And that's what that that's what that means. And that was way harder to explain than I thought it was going to be. Um, and then we have you know creating new home ones and inside create table if not existed weather API home. And it says that we want to create one table called w uh, d underscore one. We want to make it an integer, and we create one called county. Uh, and we say it's a text. Another one called state. This is a text. One called city. That's also a text right here. And then we have one for like truncating the the database, right? It says you know delete from weather API home where wd underscore one is equal to one. Okay. So if we run this right now, you see that we get this weather application. And when we go over here to search for any weather, right? If I was to search for Hilo, Hawaii, right? and we click on this part right here, and we go to details, see that we have this save button. And when I save this, you can see in the background that it, 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 it did something for council logging, and you can see exactly what I was talking about by encoding, by uh, encoding that URI, by uh, looking even at that. So what I did right there is, now I'll show you guys inside of the code what I actually did there. So if we go back over to Qt Creator here and stop this from happening, okay? We go over to let's see, that's under examples, weather delegate. So we can see here that we have XML reading from exactly what I did <clears throat> shown you before and where it's getting its data from. And then if we go down, we have a mouse area somewhere around here. Some details. Save button, OK? So right here it says database, home country. OK, this is what it's council logging, right? Which you guys just seen down there. But what it's really doing is it's saying, on clicked, connect to that database, uh, run this JavaScript right here, right? Which I have, let me get this bigger for you guys to see here. It says this database, okay? And you can see it's in blue, uh, 1034. If we go up to the top, import common DB utilities as database. Now, what it's doing here is it's saying database create initial home table. So if we actually go back over to our common DB utilities here, and we actually look for that function, create initial database, okay, insert into tables, that's what it does on that mouse click. So it truncates the table, anyone that, that has the letter of, or the number of one. Okay, and then it from there repopulates the table. Okay, so that so that we don't always have to have reading from XML. We can store data locally. We can store settings. We can, if we're making games, we can store high scores of these games and low scores of these games. We can store whatever we want, and what, we just make databases over and over and over again. It doesn't matter. You can make as many as you want. Um, I think I don't know um, to be honest actually about that. 
But you can see as you go through my code here that you know we've got delegates and we've got models. We've got delegates, we've got models. We've got that's basically the whole entire thing. You know, go out, get some data, collect it, save it to a database, and then move on. Um, and I think that that's a good option to be able to have. Now, if we actually want to look at our our database, right? We can actually look at these databases that we are creating. We can open up our terminal, right, and then change directories dot local, right, and then it's uh, share uh, Qt project uh, QML viewer, and then QML local storage or some offline storage databases. We list. You'll see that we got databases here, and these are the databases that we can use. Right? And then if we want to, we can open up one of these files in our SQLite browser that I was saying should be installed before we started. But you know, we can look at the database to look and see what's actually inside of them. Okay? So now that that's over, let's take another look at this application that I was just showing you guys here. If we run that app one more time, if we see it on here, I had to give notice to the, where I was getting the data from. And you'll see when we hover over it, it turns blue. And if we click on it, it brings in a browser, an actual browser, right? And this is Qt WebKit. And Qt WebKit is used in order to make browsers. And that's what it's used for. And um, Or we can use things like uh, uh, we can use things like Qt. Uh, like, there's all sorts of things that we can use to open up different files. We can. Um, use something like uh, Qt open e file externally. Okay, that's another way that we can open up different things, right? So if I like open this project that I have going on in underneath my templates here, let's see here. What was I? I'll set that to be as my active, and it is, and I'll run it. And you'll see this is a standalone version of Ubuntu TV with uh, you know nothing but standalone. And if we go, you know, it has like a fake lenses and stuff like that. Like if we go to our our uh, I don't know, like our movie lens right here, you can see that it brings up the lenses, um, and we can you know open these up. So what I mean by opening it up is is when we click on this, all right, December 10th, whatever, it's it's going to go and open it through our default movie player that we have set, right? So if I was to actually go back, go, go to my computer and details, and say set my default player to be VLC, it'll open it in VLC, okay? And to do that, one simply, let me just close this down. To do that, if we look underneath this dash right here and the fake lens, like the uh, music lens right here, <clears throat> you will see that we have Qt open URL externally, and then underneath the function is what you add, right? So if we have Qt open file externally here. I'll paste it into the channel. That will open files and externally using mime type um, to open up these files. Uh, it doesn't work like the greatest, so to say, um, and it has some problems, but you know it works pretty good. Other ones that are great, like that, are, are the variable uh, or the function, I should say, like Qt quit. And that'll quit your application. Um, and there's just so many of them. You, you're more than welcome to go through them. Now, something that I use a lot is Qt format date and time, um, which is such a handy tool, right? Um, so, say, like, you're getting like some sort of uh, data. Okay, here I'll show you guys exactly what I mean. Let's go back over to the weather app and we'll set this as an active weather project, okay? And let's go down here and let's uh, look at one of the, the, the home. 
Alright, and then we'll go find the slider. Details, I called it. And if we look right here, we've got QT format date and time. So if I was to take this out right here, I'll just comment this out, okay? And then we'll use the variable that we're using here, time from, right? And we run this, save it and run it. We'll see when we go to our details page that it looks like this. It looks like uh, what we call ISO something time, right? It's like ISO 80, 90 something, something, I don't know, right? But it says 2013-02 time, 1100. That's the starting observation time. See, but we can use uh, things like uh, exactly what I just showed you, QT format date and time. And then so when we run it again now, and I'll paste this into the channel, and we go to details, once it loads, you can see that it sets it to Saturday, 11 o'clock, 1100 on 2013, right? And of course, you know, you can always, for these help options right here, we go over to the help page, and we actually type in format, uh, and we spell it correctly right here, date format, and then you can you can actually find the the format date time right here. So when we click on this, QML, you'll see the expressions are written right here, and they're very easy to read, and they tell you exactly what they do. So it's a really easy way to be able to to take some sort of string that you maybe get in that is is hard to use, and then take it and make it into a uh, using it a lot. <laughs> You know, instead of, well, I'll show you guys an example of what I'm trying to say. So if I, no, you can't. Um, so if I am to take and, let's look at Unity 2D again, okay, right? Let's look at some older JavaScript files, right? If we are to look at um, underneath common, there's a JavaScript file here, utils.js. And if we go down, there are these super long functions inside of here that are so unnecessarily not needed anymore. Um, example. This one right here, this whole entire function from a to what we exactly what I just showed you. Everything that I'm highlighting right here, up to right here, this can all be done with that command that I just showed you. So there's no need for all this crazy struct stuff right here. And all of that stuff that you see right there, that, that can all be done with the, with the QT uh, format, date, and time options, which are so handy. And, and all, those, all those options are. And if we go back to the help page, you'll see that the elements, they're all listed, right? So there's also like uh, exactly what I showed you, open URL, um, all these objects, right? There's also a QT darker, QT lighter to like, if I had a rectangle, uh, I don't know, let's go back to our example. If I had a rectangle and and I wanted to change the color, I could say um, QT dot darker and we can start putting in our time, or I'm sorry, not our time. Uh, we can start putting in the uh, color, right? And then how much more darker we want it to be. 
Okay, so we could put in, oh, I don't know, util, what do we call it? Ubuntu orange, right? And then we'll make it five times the shade darker. Oops, wrong file. I gotta make this my default set as my main active project. And you'll see it took that orange and made it into brown, darker, and then lighter. And I made it back into white because it's eight times whiter. So that's something that you can do. And you can also use, you know, the strings inside of here. Like, you know, pound pg4. So on and so forth. So um, let's see if there's any questions as this class is about to wrap up. I wish we had had more time to get some things done. See if anybody has any questions really regarding uh, getting their applications done into you know how to use the Ubuntu stuff at all. See if anybody has any questions about that, or if anybody got stuck on anything or whatever. But besides that. I think that's a whole heap load of knowledge for somebody to learn in four hours, and I hope you guys enjoyed this session. Maybe we can have another one if need be. If not, that's also understandable. Yeah, maybe if we do uh, another class, we'll actually get into making it into a desktop application, making it into a phone application. As a recap, you know, we learned how to move around QC Creator. We learned how to change versions. We learned how to add Valkyrie. We learned how to add JavaScript files and then to be able to call our JavaScript files whenever we want. We learned how to use XML list model. We learned rectangles and text, and we learned how to put HTML into text. We learned how to do behavior animations. We did not get to text. We did not get to states and transitions, which I'm actually feel really bad about. Um, as far as uh, other tutorials and stuff like that, again, you can uh, let me screen share here. You can go right over and the uh, we just go to the welcome screen tutorials. And then there's three tutorials in here that are really short and simple that I highly suggest to watch. I mean, I suggest watching all the QML ones on here, but I really, really highly suggest there's like uh, part one. Here they are right here. Qt Quick Elements, Qt Quick Elements Part 2, and Qt Quick Elements Part 3. Those three ones are so good. And they're so, you know, and then we got ones for other stuff too, you know. But, uh, you know, I should probably watch a couple of those too. Um, but yeah, we got these these three right here are incredibly impressive to watch and that those are about states and transitions and I highly suggest learning what states are and what transitions are. Uh, let's see if anybody has any questions.
And I, would just, I do want to thank all of you guys for four hours of learning activity, you know, and especially Jose, too, here for uh, hosting this event. You're awesome. But, boy, I'm pretty tired. <laughs> we do have a question from Sid Payton. Okay. Uh, How is the performance of QML and Qt? The weather app seemed laggy, but maybe that was just the video. Uh, I'm sure it's just the video. Um, you're more than welcome to download that code. It's open source, free and open source, and, and, and have at it. Um, QML is really fast. QML is really, really, really fast. And what it can run on is impressive. Um, not only can it run on X, you know, it can, it can run on a lot of different things. It can run on Mac, it can run on Windows. It can, so when you create an application, you can run that on Windows, you can run it on Blackberries, you can run it on Nexus 7, Nexus whatever, uh, any embedded, almost all embedded Linux things. You can run it on Raspberry Pi, you can run it on Whale, and you can run it on, uh, it's one of the only things that you can really, truly, heavily rely on to run on Whale. Um, there's some gear tutorial, there's some tutorials about that out there if you'd like to look into that. Um, XCB, all different sorts of types of things that it can run on. It's very impressive. And as far as like uh, memory usage and everything like that, I have not to, been able to find another one that even comes close in comparability of how fast it can run and how much memory it does not use. Um, you know, I've done tests before. I've made applications that, you know, I've used Glade before in my life. And I, I, I've also, you know, done straight up cube work also too and also QML work. And, it just seems that the QML which seems to run the fastest, it's the easiest to program in. And there's a reason for that. It's because everybody that does the backend stuff for Q is doing it for QML, you know, it's their feature, so to say, you know. Uh, it's, it's really impressive, to be honest with you. But yeah, there's lists out there of different types of things that you can install it on. Uh, it's overwhelming. It's, it's massive. The list is nice and it's, it's good. Nika90 says, Mode of code in this tutorial were all QML JavaScript. But where does the C++ come in? I have always heard that Qt slash C++ together, mostly. He says, so, and I'm sorry, Sid Payton, I'll get right back. Oh, you, that's why I just answered. So, yes, C++ can be used, and I will do a four-minute presentation on that really quick here, on how you, one can use C++ in their, in their QML. So let's, uh, let's, the fastest way that I can show, okay, the fastest way I can show this to you is just to open up one of my, to open up Unity TV, okay? Uh, this top. All of this code right here, underneath source, all of this code is C++. All these options right here. So we have things like application. And you can see that this uses, you know, Dbus Importer, Go Objects. It uses Q. It uses X11 libraries. It uses external C libraries. You can use Python. Um, you can use other things from, like, see how I'm using, like, BAMF here. Um, you can call other libraries from different other places in your C++, as I'm sure you probably know. So we got this application, and we got a header file over here, too. And, yes, you can use GTK in this, too. That's a very common misconception that you can't use GTK with Q. It's an actual lie. You can definitely use it. I mean, the whole entire panel for Unity 2D is basically wrote in, like, GTK 1, 2, Three or something. I don't know. I don't like GTK, anyways. But that's that's that. So, but if we go over here, right, to our plugin.cpp right here, you can see that it calls each one of those files, including application header, right? And then we go down and we take a look at this, and we have this function here, right? This says we're going to make a plugin, okay? All right, and we're going to register it, right? And then if we go down and actually look, we see we got registration types right here. And if we go down and go down, eventually we're going to see here's our application, right? So if we 
we've now added, okay, the functionalities of application CPP and also the header files. We, we've added th what it can do, okay, to as a registration type called application, okay, underneath the plugin. And if we go down to the bottom here, you can see we export the plugin, Q export plugin as Unity 2D. And where that's what we're exporting it as, okay? And then our Unity 2D plugin was that function that we were just looking at up here, grabbing all these registration types and, and then loading them in. So what happens here is that it grabs each one of these things right here, right? Gesture handle, window, window introspection monitor, uh, sp spread monitor, input shape manager, all these different things that you're seeing here. Unity 2D panel, strut manager. And it makes those into elements that we can now use in our QML. So it makes a whole entire plugin class, okay? So if we were to open up, and I'll show you what a plugin, and, and I actually changed directories to where uh, I don't know, I'll just change to one of my cute versions here, right? And we actually go into QML here and take a look. You'll see the things like Ubuntu right here, Qt Web Quick, Qt Quick 2, Qt Test, Qt Multimedia. These are all plugins, okay? If I go inside of Ubuntu right here, change directory Ubuntu, the next one's going to be components, right? And that's how when we say import Ubuntu.components, 0.1, we're just importing all this QML and JavaScript that they've already made, right? So that's all we're doing right there. You can see that it makes, right here, it makes our, our binary, right, that we can use, right? And then inside of our QML dir, if we're cat QML dir, you'll see that it has each one of the names, right? But now, if we were to maybe change directories into where I have my Qt4 installed, Uh, it's going to be underneath imports somewhere, which is underneath user lib qt4. Change directories, imports. You'll see that here's my Unity 2D plugin. Okay? So it takes all this stuff right here, all this C++ code, and makes it into, uh, makes it into a plugin itself just like Qt Mobility, or even Qt itself, or D, Box 2D. These are all different plugins that I have inside of here, right, that I can call upon, right, like BAMF. Um, so if I go and I actually look at a file, okay, if we actually, like, look at Unity 2D, right, and let's just open up the shell and look at the shell, you'll see at the top, that I'm actually importing that, right? To use all of those things that I have that are there for me to use from the C++ library plugins, like gesture handle, like spread monitor, input shape managers, input shape rectangle. These are all C++ backings that are being used. Pointer barriers, strut manager, those are all things that are C++, but now we, they've been made into, okay, they've been made into their own elements that now can be used. And you can go all over the place and find these elements. They're all over the place. So I hope, I hope that answered your question. And uh, I, I think, are we, Jose, are you there? Are we, are we we're done? I'm still here. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah. You can use other libraries from all different <laughs> projects, too, you know? Like the new HUD that, that is on the tablets and stuff like that, that is just yet yeah, another plugin, right? It's just another another plugin, just like... And then there's ones that I can't find out there, like the Ubuntu application one that is coming in. And then there's a friends one, too, that's also new that I've been seeing, where it gathers, you know, everything from, like, Facebook, Twitter, and everything like that. It's like an API is back end. You know, you can you can look all over the place for different different import modules and stuff like that. So I hope that answers your question. 
And uh, our, our, if anybody has any more questions, they can ask them on IRC. But I think we are uh, I think we're officially out of time. And uh, again, I want to thank Jose. Jose, if you got anything to say before we end this, uh, take yeah, care, thanks everyone. for sticking. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, thanks to you, Joseph, for doing all this tutorial. Uh, just to remind you, if you haven't watched all the tutorial, you can go to youtube.com forward slash Ubuntu on here, subscribe, and you can watch uh, the whole uh, the whole four hours we've been doing here. Uh, you can just subscribe to have future updates on our videos, and you can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Ubuntu on here. To get future updates, uh, you'll get updates like 15 minutes before we start a session, so you can stay tuned. You can also check our calendar at ubuntuonear.com forward slash calendar. All our future events are in there, so uh, make sure to stay tuned and see you. See you soon.